Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk Sarcoidosis. Today in the studio, I have my favorite ladies <laughs> from Rebecca Bitzer and Associates. Um, Caitlin's been here before, but we have a newbie yes. in the studio today, and I'd like to welcome Clara Knezvik. Yep. And she's a registered dietitian, so welcome to the show. Thank you. And welcome back, Miss Caitlin Williams, Thank you. who is a also a registered dietitian, mm -hmm. and we really appreciate the time, the effort, and the education in regards to healthy eating. Yes, so definitely. welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank <laughs> welcome, you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, yes. And you know, I love talking about food because, in my opinion, I feel like food is medicine. You know, you eat healthy, you probably stay out of the doctor's office more. And I'm sure, you know, you have to go for some things, but you don't want to have to take all those pills. Mm -hmm. And especially for me having sarcoidosis, I really try to stick to it. Mm -hmm. And you ladies definitely help me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so the first question, and, and either one of you can answer mm -hmm. it, just feel free to jump in. Um, who are the rebel dietitians? That's what I want to know. And what makes you different from the other nutritionists? So rebel dietitians, we are a group of eight dietitians with three office locations. We have one in Greenbelt, one in Columbia, and one in Annapolis. And what makes us different is that we want to reject the fad diets, reject the quick fixes, and we want to help everyone learn how to eat well and health healthfully and sustainably. So something that's going to work for a long period of time, for the rest of your life. Right. And so my, my question is also, and maybe Caitlin, you can jump in mm -hmm. on this one. What can a dietitian do for me and all the viewers that are watching out there? Definitely. So our motto at Rebecca Bitzer and Associates is that we make food simple again uh -huh. through education, through coaching. You know, the information out there is overwhelming. And so we break it down, we make it simple, and we offer practical, realistic solutions to those challenges that you experience day by day. So we'll sit down with you, we'll see what your needs are, mm -hmm. and we'll approach it from there. Absolutely, and we want it to be realistic, we want it to be sustainable, and we want it to be personalized. So something mm -hmm. that works particularly for you doesn't gonna work for someone else. That's true, mm -hmm. everybody's yeah. different, you know, Absolutely. and that's the, that's the approach, and you're right. Now, does nutrition play a role in the management of chronic, dis uh, chronic conditions, especially, um, you know, sarcoidosis? Definitely. Absolutely. I mean, what you put into your body really affects everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when you think about the different nutrients and fiber and all of those aspects of food are just going to really nourish your body and help you be the best you. Right. And I think we've all, you know, experienced that there are times when we're eating better than others and you know, I've had clients say to me, they're like, yeah, I didn't realize how bad I was feeling until I, we started implementing some of these changes that we've talked about. You know, when you mm -hmm. eat better, you do feel better, even oh, if yes. it's oh, my God. just in little ways, like having more energy and mm -hmm. being able to get up in the morning easier and things like that. You know, and that's so true because I don't know why, and I don't know if clients have said this to you before, but when I eat something off that beaten path or when I have this, you know, this thing that I do every single day, this daily regimen, I feel so guilty. <laughs> I feel really guilty. I'm thinking, why am I feeling so guilty? But um, what, what is, uh, I guess, what type of foods or is there anything out there that can help with uh, inflammation? Because that's the big deal mm -hmm. with sarcoidosis mm -hmm. because it's an inflammatory illness. Definitely. So there are those foods that are known to be pro-inflammatory versus anti-inflammatory. So the ones that you want to maximize are like olive oil, nuts, fatty fish, fruits and vegetables, uh -huh. leafy green vegetables in particular. Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay. So uh, what is considered a healthy diet, Clara? So we <laughs> want you to kind of look at, if you've ever seen my plate before, mm -hmm. um, it is released by the United States government, mm -hmm. and it will show you, you know, you want to try and get at least half of your plate to be veggies, a quarter of it to be starch, and a quarter of it to be protein, so that you're getting the energy from the starches, the carbohydrates, you're getting the muscle building power of the protein, it helps keep you full longer, and then you're also getting veggies because mm -hmm you're getting extra um, fiber, you're getting all those vitamins and minerals, and of course you want to incorporate dairy and fruits and water and all that kind of good stuff as well. Now, okay, I hear a lot of different types of butter and olive oil and margarine, etc. So, what should I know about those different types of fats? Definitely. So, sorry, I'll take this <laughs> you one. Take that one. Go ahead. <laughs> Anyone can take yeah. this question. <laughs> so, fat got a bad reputation over the years, and not rightfully so. Yeah. There are good fats and there's bad fats. So, there's those heart healthy fats that are really great for cholesterol. Mm -hmm. you know, olive oil, canola oil, nuts, seeds, avocado, those fatty fish, mm -hmm. versus the not so healthy fats like trans fat, saturated fats, which are really shown to increase cholesterol. Um, so, you know, butter is one of them, the high fat meats. Right. It's not that they're horrible for you, it's just we really want to limit them. Yeah, and those are the ones that also can help increase inflammation. So from, mm -hmm. the, from the inflammation perspective, we want to try and minimize those fats. Mm -hmm. Okay, well I didn't know that, so that's a good tip. So what are the best tips for achieving a healthy, balanced diet? So meal planning is probably my favorite tip. Mm -hmm. Meal planning, planning, okay. planning, planning. Right. Um, and at the beginning, for some people, that can be a little bit daunting. But once you get into the habit of kind of thinking about, okay, what am I gonna, what am I gonna pack for snack this week? What am I gonna cook for dinner? What am I gonna do? That's kind of an easy way to make sure that you're buying everything at the grocery store and that you have it in your house and that it's ready to go. When you think about it, if you're, you know, you didn't plan for dinner, yeah. you're starving, mm -hmm. you're driving home, yep. what's the easiest thing to do? You know, mm -hmm. Stop and get something at a restaurant where you really don't have that control over what goes in it. Absolutely. So if you already have planned ahead, you don't have to worry about that. Absolutely. Um, also, I would say snacking. Yes. I'm a big fan of snacking right. in the right way mm -hmm. um, because if you plan for a balanced, nutritious snack, in the middle of the day in between meals, <laughs> you're less likely to overeat at the next meal. And that was my next question. Mm -hmm. Like what do you ladies suggest as a healthy snack? Mm -hmm. So for a healthy snack, you want to try and pair a carb plus a protein or a fat. The carb is going to give you that quick burst of energy. Our mm -hmm. body likes carbs. It likes to digest the carbs. It digests them very quickly. Mm -hmm. But the protein and the fat is what kind of gives you that energy for a long period of time. Because you kind of need both of them to make sure that you get the energy that you need right away, but then also so you stay full. Okay. And you know, the meal prep, I just want to go back there. Mm -hmm. You know, Denise been using that meal prep <laughs> ever since you guys were explaining and educating us on that. Mm -hmm. And it's good because I do the same thing. But the meal prep, uh, it, it saves you a lot of time it and does. money. And I know uh, Clara has said that before mm -hmm. on the show, and we just recently taped one that expressed that. So I guess that is the biggest deal yeah. about meal prepping, and that's the important mm -hmm. factor about it. Um, so back to the healthy snacks, are there mm -hmm. any other healthy snacks that you would suggest that are quick and for people that's on the go? Mm -hmm. I love apples and peanut butter. Or even if you can't, you know, apples sometimes, if you really need something on the go, getting like a pretzel or something like that, but pairing mm -hmm. it with the peanut butter together is mm -hmm. one of my favorites. Um, trail mix is a great yes. mixture of carb and protein mm -hmm. okay. um, with the uh, dried fruit as mm -hmm. well as the nuts. That's great for it's shelf stable. Yeah. So on the go is a perfect option. Yeah, and they sell those little hummus packs also now in the grocery Which store. <laughs> yeah, no, they're great and you just they're perfectly portioned, they're ready to mm -hmm. go. So those are also fantastic. Which I love. So what are some tips for maximizing the fruit and veggie intake? Mm -hmm. I would say make them a part of your snacks. Absolutely. That's Get them in idea. more often in the day. Carrots with hummus, apple with peanut butter. Hmm. Um, what else? Oh, bell peppers and sprinkled <laughs> cheese. Bell peppers and cheese. Grapes yeah. with some cheese. Yeah. Just kind of 
getting them in there so that you're getting your five to eight servings a day. And thinking about kind of where they're coming from at each meal. Like mm -hmm. I recommend for my clients, have a piece of fruit at breakfast. And then at lunch, if you're having, you know, half of your plate is veggies at lunch mm -hmm. and at dinner, there you go, you have three servings taken care of, well maybe even more depending on how right. much, how many veggies you're having at lunch and at dinner. Mm -hmm. So kind of thinking about it each meal, where are my fruits, where are my veggies, mm -hmm. am I getting them in? I mean, are there any specific fruits, just out of curiosity, that you should be eating for breakfast, like a banana or apple or something like that, or it doesn't really matter? I have personal preference, know. yeah. Okay. In season, is going to taste better, it'll be cheaper, but you know, whatever your personal preference is. Okay. Now, here's the real question <laughs> that everybody probably, I know they want to know. Can you tell us what foods we should really, really stay away from? Very good question. Mm -hmm. um, so one of our philosophies as Rebel Dietitians is we believe that all foods can fit into a diet. However, Moderation definitely plays a role in that. So we were talking earlier a little bit about the 80-20. You want to try, you know, 80% of the time mm -hmm. aiming to be getting all of your fruits and vegetables, to be snacking, portioning everything out. But, you know, sometimes you're going to want to have a piece of birthday cake on your birthday. And there are those fun foods that we don't want to restrict because studies have shown when we restrict them, we're more likely to overeat them at right. a later time. And we cheat. Yeah. <laughs> but also being aware of those foods that can be inflammatory, yeah. like really sugary beverages Absolutely. and trans fats right. and like lard and fried oh, food. Oh, lard. People food. still use that? <laughs> <laughs> they do. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> well, we know fatigue is um, one of the common symptoms. Mm -hmm. So how can I reach my nutrition goals if I'm just tired all the time and actually People that have sarcoidosis, that actually comes with the territory mm -hmm. where there's a lot of times that you're really tired and you don't feel like doing anything. Mm -hmm. So what can we do about that? And that just goes back to our meal prep. Meal prep, meal prep, meal prep, meal prep. Right, right. <laughs> and almost, in, I mean, obviously you can't anticipate all the time when sure. you're going to be tired, but mm -hmm. if you know that mornings are a good time for you. Mm -hmm. On like a Sunday morning is a good time. You know, you've slept in a little bit. Maybe that's a time that you make it a meal prep time. You know, take advantage of things like your freezer, take advantage of your slow cooker, different things like that kind of help you get ahead and almost anticipate because I know I feel like this. I get home after work, I don't feel like cooking sometimes. Right. And But meal prep is what makes that mm -hmm. easier. And healthier. And healthier, yes. Okay, so now let's talk about this when we are not meal prepping mm -hmm. or if we're out and about and we don't have our lunch and didn't bring what we're supposed mm -hmm. to bring, what are the healthy choices for actually going out and for fast food? Mm -hmm. Are biggest there any concern. healthy choices? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My biggest concern with a fast food meal is it's typically pretty low in fiber. Yes. It really doesn't have those vegetables. Right. Yeah. So if you can get a side salad or get something that's kind of going to boost the vegetables, a, okay. a sub yeah. sandwich with loaded veggies, yeah. um, that's a great option. Absolutely. And looking at the plate, kind of going back to mm -hmm. how we were saying, you want to make half of your plate veggies, right. a quarter starch, a quarter protein. Mm -hmm. Look at that fast food meal that you're going to get. Right. You know, for example, if you're going and you get a burger, the bun on there counts as your starch and the patty is going to count as your protein. But what do we usually get with a burger is french fries which also happens yeah. to count as a starch. So it's kind of, okay, so that would be a case where maybe a side salad would be a better option so you can mm -hmm. get extra veggies right. going Instead on. Instead of eating a big old yeah. thing of french fries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and choosing things that are baked, yeah. over right. fried. Again, we're, most fried foods don't have that right. great fat no, that we're trying to minimize. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and taking half of your plate home, some of the portions in these restaurants are very large. Double or triple. Double or triple. <laughs> so recognizing that you're full and not continuing to eat just because right. it's in front of you and taking half of it home for, you know, lunch the next day or if it's a very la large entree and you know right. it's going to be splitting it with someone. So the other thing is, you know, people, they have a, um, I guess this, you know, this, this, I don't know about the nutrition, but sometimes people, they feel like if they're eating healthy, that they can't have dessert as if they're cheating. So let's kind of bust that myth. Is mm -hmm. it possible that because we're eating healthy, can we still have dessert? 
Well, as rebel dietitians, yes, right. we do love dessert. Claire is a we baker. Do. I am a baker. <laughs> Just like we had that that pie, what is the mm -hmm. pie crust? We did have the pie crust yeah, with the oh, pie. Oh, the out oh, the pie. Mm -hmm. yeah. Delicious. Yeah, and so we believe right. that you can have those foods that you really love because when you restrict mm -hmm. and you don't have those foods, you know, cravings start. Like, yeah. I love cookies. Well, I'm not going right. to eat any cookies. I'm not going to eat any yeah. cookies. Finally, that craving hits and you eat a whole box of cookies yeah. because... And it's like punishment. Yeah. yeah. It's like punishment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you know, if it's if you're out and it's a celebration or something, you know, I had a client say to me once, yeah, you know, I didn't have the cake at my party and then uh -huh. I came home and uh -huh. I ate it anyway and I felt really guilty about it. Kind of enjoying it. Like it's part of the mm -hmm. part of the celebration, mm -hmm. kind of just you know, and of course moderation is important, and we definitely don't recommend restricting earlier in the day and saying, Okay, I'm gonna not eat so I can have dessert tonight. You know, you want to keep eating, snacking as part of mm -hmm. a healthful diet, but mm -hmm. definitely you don't want to restrict and make yourself feel guilty about enjoying a dessert in moderation. That's good, because I'm going to take that and keep it up in the yeah. memory bank. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I eat something sweet, I'll think about what you said. <laughs> and why not get the one that you love the best? Absolutely. I know. Like if you love cookies, don't go and get some crumb right. cookie that Just you're get not the real yeah, thing. Yeah, get the good one. Right. Yeah. Get the real cookies. And enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to eat it, just eat it, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> so here's the other thing, too. And I know it's a, you know, people sometimes, um, they talk about whether you should have supplements or not have supplements, and it's a controversy, and especially with people with chronic diseases. Do you feel that uh, supplements, you can manage your chronic illness taking supplements? It's definitely up. I mean, it depends on the condition, Absolutely. what supplements are needed, but right. it also depends on the person because Absolutely. if you're not deficient in something, mm -hmm. it's really not worth it necessary, necessarily right. to take the supplement because I mean, if it's a water-soluble vitamin, you're just going to you know, pee it out, pee it out. Right, right, Absolutely. yeah. And then you just have expensive pee. Yeah. Right, you just keep going to the restroom yeah. and the bathroom, and that's mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're food first, so if we can, one of the services that we offer in our office are, is vitamin and mineral testing. So it helps us okay. see from our clients, you know, are you deficient? Are you not deficient? Oh, that's and awesome. one of the first things that we try and do is, okay, how can we fix this with your diet? Because research has shown that taking a vitamin C from an orange is going to be absorbed better in our body than taking a vitamin C supplement. Mm. So being able to food first and then, again, supplement in right. addition, right. with something not that just you might take it need. and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, because that's a that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Now, um, do I need to eat, or even the viewers just watching and who have chronic illnesses, and even if they don't have chronic illnesses, do you really have to eat organic foods? That is a great question. <laughs> you can take that question. I will. <laughs> so there are pros and cons to uh -huh. both sides. Um, what we believe is that um, I would rather someone eat fruits and vegetables, even if they're conventional, rather than not eating fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. that are not organic, if that makes sense. And mm -hmm. there are things that, you know, if you want to maybe start dabbling into the organic, going with the dirty dozen, which are kind of the 12 most, most common foods that you should be, fruits and vegetables that right. you should be buying that are organic versus the clean 15, which generally are okay. Mm -hmm. um, so there are definitely pros and cons to both. Right, and this, this group, EWG, has done a lot of research on these dirty dozen, and okay. they test the fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. to see how much of pesticide is actually in them. So it's kind of worth considering. Yeah. Okay, and I know for some people it's really all about the price. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and sometimes you can get organic foods at a reasonable price, but I think that's a deterrent for a lot of consumers mm -hmm. because they look at it and go, gosh, uh, organic ban banana versus just this regular mm -hmm. banana over here yeah. that's cheaper by the pound. Yeah. And right. it's unfortunate, but that's how a lot of people, I think, look at right. it. And, yeah. and that's why we believe that in the end, we just want you to be eating the fruits and vegetables. Right, as Absolutely. long as you just get it in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And of course, washing yeah. it very well and practicing good food hygiene that way. But Okay. Yeah. Now, I have another question that I've been kind of like toying with as far as exercises, mm -hmm. and hopefully you ladies can help all the viewers to figure that out. What type of exercises do you recommend, especially when you're eating all this great healthy food? Mm -hmm. What exercises should we be doing? 
So we're not um, personal trainers right. or physical therapists. So generally, we don't recommend specific exercises for our clients. Mm -hmm. What we do encourage and recommend is finding something that you like and that you enjoy. Okay. Because we don't believe that exercise should be a chore. It is very important for a healthy diet, but you don't, you know, the last thing you want to do at the end of the day is, oh, now I have to go to the gym and do something that I don't want to do, and I'm not looking forward to it at all. But, you know, it's a very different conversation if you're like, okay, well, I'm going to go to this Zumba class that I'm right. doing with my girlfriends mm -hmm. or that I'm going to go walk, do a fast walk around the lake near my house with my husband right. or my family. And that's a very different conversation than mm -hmm. you're getting that exercise in without saying, oh, <laughs> now I have to do this? I don't want to. I like the label that we put on it. We put yeah. a, we call it joyful movement. Joyful movement. movement. Right. You should enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, you know, it's funny because you kind of sound like that guy with the time to make the donuts commercial. <laughs> time to make the donuts. And I do know people that's like, oh, gosh, I have to get on a mm -hmm. treadmill. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I have to lift. So it is something that you want to make it fun and you don't want to make it seem like, you know, like, oh, my gosh, it's, you know, I can't do this today mm -hmm. because then you won't. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So when you're in a grocery store, kind of like let's set that up for people. <laughs> Should we only <laughs> be shopping like the you know, like the perimeter of the store, or should we be like all over mm -hmm. the place? You know, what, what, should, how should we go into a grocery mm -hmm. store? Because you know they have things all over the shelves that's calling your name. Definitely. <laughs> as soon as you walk in. Yeah, definitely. I'll preface this with the grocery store is my favorite place. Mine too. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Occupational <laughs> hazard. Occupational <laughs> hazard. I spend Especially way too much when money. You're hungry. Oh yeah. Never do that. I know, but <laughs> yeah. the the theory or whatever um, uh, that says shop the perimeter. It has right. valid, um, it's valid. There you know, are validity behind it, absolutely. The produce, the frozen right. section, the dairy, all of these really healthy foods are on the outskirts of the grocery store, but the inside aisles are not totally off limits. I would agree, yeah. And they have beans and nuts and... Grains. Grains that yeah. can be incorporated very healthfully, mm -hmm. but it's really, you know, using scrutiny when you're picking up things in yeah. the inside aisles, reading the nutrition facts labeled, mm -hmm. being aware of what you're putting in your body because marketing can be very tricky. Yeah. Yes. So really reading ingredients and reading how much fiber is in something and how much sodium is in yeah. something. Mm -hmm. And the types of fat that is in it as well. So I guess it's, it's the mindset and that's really good to teach people especially your clients, mm -hmm. is to have that mindset that once you walk into the doors of any grocery store, that you should be focused mm -hmm. and you should shop within those uh, parameters of what you need for your mm -hmm. food group, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Definitely. And then having that focus can also save you money. Absolutely. Because you know uh, what you're going to be meal yes. prepping. Yeah, you do. Yes. So yes. you have your yes. list and you uh -huh. stick to your list and, and it's that not can save go you bad. some money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my number one tip is never grocery shop hungry. I did mm -hmm. that before. Ever. It it's is. Off the chain with the pricing. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you pick up everything, mm -hmm. things you don't even need, yeah. you pick it up. Because you're walking and you say, oh, starving. that looks really good right, right now, well, I need this. Hungry. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> so I'm guilty. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to ask each of you ladies, what is your favorite go-to oh. food? <laughs> like, favorite <laughs> go-to food? Okay. Be honest now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will. <laughs> you can go first. Okay. <laughs> My favorite go-to food are tacos. Mm. Um, and really Mexican food in general, but tacos in particular, because mm -hmm. they are so versatile, mm -hmm. you can play around with your proteins, you can do it really quickly in a skillet, or you can slow cook and make it in the slow cooker, you can do it in the oven. And then on top of all of that yeah. is, <laughs> you can incorporate so many fresh veggies and heart healthy fats if you're adding guacamole, and there's dairy if you put some cheese on there. So you really can customize it to the way you like to do it. And that's mm -hmm. probably one of my favorite things to do I'm cooking for a large group because everyone has different taste preferences. My friends all have different, you know, what they like eating, what they don't like eating. But if you make something like that, everyone can customize it to the way that, that they, they like, like to do it. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, it makes a great round two meal. I'm all about the round two meals mm -hmm. when you cook one day and you can kind of make something oh, yes. different with it. Oh, yes. Doing like a taco salad or making a burrito or doing, you know, anything with it, putting it on rice. That's why I love tacos. That sounds good. <laughs> Caitlin? That was, that was quite the answer. I'm afraid to go after that. No. Mine is much more simple. I'm Italian, and I love pizza. pizza. So I am all about making my own pizza right. at home. Mm -hmm. okay. Whether you make the dough, the crust yourself, or you just use like a store-bought 
mm -hmm. uh, piece of naan or English muffins, you know, no matter what the base is, yeah. cauliflower crust, whatever, yeah. loading it up with veggies. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of making it yourself, yep. making it at home. And then it's about moderation. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're going to have a normal old, you know, pizza that may be high in carb or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Having a couple slices and then having a salad on the side. Absolutely. Wow. You know, pizza doesn't have to be Sounds off limits. Okay. Absolutely. Well, and that's well, another that one that good. you can customize yeah. very much. Yes, so, you like, can. it's mm -hmm. very fun to, like, set out all the toppings and say, okay, here you go, make your own pizza. So. Well, I'll tell you mine is very quickly. It's hummus. Mm -hmm. That's plain and simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hummus and flax chips. <laughs> yum. Yum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yum. And then <laughs> celery and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, for the last question, because uh, we're about to wrap up. Can you tell the viewers, especially those in the DMV area, mm -hmm. what other services that you ladies provide to help them reach their nutritionist mm -hmm. uh, goals, nutrition goals? Yeah, so besides the one-on-one -on -one counseling, which is really the majority of our service, mm -hmm. um, we have support groups, we have grocery store tours. I'll go with you to the grocery yeah. store and, <laughs> and really? show Absolutely. you. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay. We love the grocery mm -hmm. store. Uh, we have the nutrient deficiency testing like we already talked about. Mm -hmm. um, we well. do food, food sensitivity testing mm -hmm. as well for okay. those who are struggling with mm -hmm. digestive issues and you don't really know what's causing it. We can mm -hmm. help you get to the bottom of it. The support groups are a big one mm -hmm. because, you know, sometimes it's not just about the food. There are kind of other things and it's helpful to talk to people who might be struggling with similar things that you're struggling with. Okay. And we also created that Mayhem to Mealtime mm -hmm. meal yeah. planning program planning. with lots of videos and recipes that can be really helpful. Absolutely. And we have a pretty great blog as well where okay. we're constantly putting out new recipes, new tips. Um, we have some great ones coming up for the month of February. Right now we're in our um, Rebel Lifestyle Challenge. So we okay. have new blogs going up daily, um, really trying to get that out there. Okay, well that's great. So everyone mm -hmm. can watch for the credits and check the website mm -hmm. out and find out how they can just follow you guys yeah. and everywhere that they can follow you mm -hmm. on social media yeah. and even make appointments to come in and see you fabulous ladies. Absolutely. And I tell you, I thank Rebecca every time for her allowing you <laughs> ladies to come in and mm -hmm. share these fantastic educational tips. So Rebecca, Thank you, <laughs> because I know you're, you're, they're, we're taking them away from the clients and mm -hmm. we got that all, all together. But um, once again, I just want to thank everybody for watching the show. I hope that we are giving you tips that you can use daily in your life and life-saving tips, taking in the right foods and, and always doing some kind of exercises. But again, check with your doctor first. And like I always say, stay positive, live your life, don't become a prisoner of your illness, and even if you're not ill, just live your life. Don't be stressed. Until next time, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. <laughs>